The peace of the Lord be with you, and uh, good morning. This is our devotion for Wednesday, March 3rd, and um, the Old Testament lesson is our, our reading for today. It's uh, from Jeremiah 26, verses 1 through 15. All right, uh, it's the morning, so we'll follow our morning order, page 295 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Jeremiah 26. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord all the words that I command you to speak to them. Do not hold back a word. It may be that they will listen, and everyone will turn from his evil way, that I may relent of the disaster that I intend to do to them because of their evil deeds. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me, to walk in my law that I have set before you, and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets whom I send to you urgently, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make the city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, and the priests the, and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate, de excuse me, desolate without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. And when the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. And the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death, because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words that you have heard. Now therefore mend your ways and your deeds, and obey the voice of the Lord your God, and the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon the city and its inhabitants. For in truth the Lord sent me to speak, sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. Let us pray. Blessed God, our Heavenly Father, as you sent Jeremiah to proclaim, um, uh, proclaim repentance to the uh, people of Jerusalem, uh, we pray that you would help us always to hear your call to repentance, that we would know that, um, that you are God, that we have sinned against you, that we are um, to return to you in sorrow for our sins and, uh, and, and in the the peace that you have won for us in your Son, Jesus. And we pray that as we look at the world around us, which would seek to ignore your call, that you would, um, that you would bring this world to repentance, that you would bring, the, the, um, bring, bring repentance to, to the hearts of all of us, that we would know, uh, finally, of your great love for us and your mercy for us in your Son, Jesus, and uh, the, the joy that you have when we are relieved of that guilt of our sin and the joy that, we, that you have as we are uh, enabled to stand before you face to face through that blood of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Um, so this, um, this was a kind, of a kind of a fun passage to, to, to work on because it, it made me uh, you know, go back and, and, and do a little, you know, um, Re refreshing on, on some of the things in the Old Testament here. So, uh, to start with Josiah, it says, In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. So, Josiah, if you recall, was was a good king, right? And um, he was, uh, he, he returned proper worship to the temple and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then after his death, Jehoiakim, his son uh, was, um, actually, maybe his grandson, I can't remember for sure, but it's a, a, a near descendant, um, was was brought to was put in, in, into to, to power being king and he was not faithful like like Josiah was so um, so you're in this this spot where the, there's this unfaithfulness 
and um, and and so the Lord speaks a word through through Jeremiah. Now, if you if you read the book of Jeremiah, uh, you get the impression that uh, that the Israelites just kind of see Jeremiah as as a thorn in their flesh. He's always preaching this repentance. He's always preaching this repentance, and and it wears on them, and and they get tired of it. And and um, you know he says that hey, if you don't repent, the the bad things are going to happen. And of course, as we hear that over and over again, what what we see is is really God's God's mercy. And his um, his um, his willingness, his forbearance, you know, really his willingness to be patient, and um, so so anyway, so the Lord gives this this word. He comes to Jeremiah and he says, "Stand in the court of the Lord's house." You know, the temple. There's the you've got the, the the main tent, right? The tent of meeting where the ark of the covenant was, and and, and the holy place outside the curtain uh, within the tent, and then um, and then you've got the altar in front of it, and then there's the the, the courtyard there, right outside of of those. And um, stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord. And all the words that I command you to speak to them. Now Judah is the the southern kingdom, right? That's where where Jerusalem is, is in that southern kingdom. So as all the pe- all the cities, all the people come from Judah uh, to worship at the temple, uh, Jeremiah is there, and, and and he says, "Don't hold back a word. It may be that they will listen, and everyone turn from his evil way, that I may relent of the disaster that I intend to do to them <laughs> because of their evil deeds." So he says, "Hey, listen, go." Go proclaim the word I'm about to give you in hopes that they'll repent, that they'll turn, and, and then I won't have to bring judgment upon them. And he says, here's what you'll say. You shall say to them, verse 4, Thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me, to walk in my law that I have set before you, and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets whom I send you to ur- uh, send you <clears throat> urgently, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. And... Um, you know, it, it's um, something where where what, what he's saying is that if if you don't if you don't keep his word, you know, as we were looking yesterday at the the keeping of his word. If you don't keep his word, then then destruction will come. And, and the the reference he makes to Shiloh is um, you know Shiloh is where uh, Shiloh is very important. It's where the the ark was for for a long time. Uh, and, and so when God had the ark in a place, it was. Uh, he dwelt there, right? And so he was there for a long time. Well, at a point, you get Eli's sons who, uh, they, you know, the, the Israelites want to go go to battle against the Philistines, and, and Eli's sons go out there with it, and they're, um, you know, they, they, they take it like it's, a, like it's a good luck charm, that if they just take this into battle, then they won't lose. Uh, and the Philistines are freaked out by it, but then they say, you know what, we've got to fight all the harder. So they fight all the harder, they defeat the Israelites, and they take the ark. Um, now that that um, that the fact that they would lose the battle is a judgment against Israel for for treating um, for treating the the ark like a good luck charm. But in the midst of that, what happens to Shiloh? Right, it's destroyed. So God isn't our good luck charm. Right, it's not as though we can um, you know it, it's kind of like to to equate it to uh, you know the ark being where 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 God's prom- presence was promised to be. Uh, it, it'd be kind of akin to taking home a host. From, from the Lord's Supper and, and keeping it in our house and is, is a good look charm, which people did, right? Um, so, so that's um, you know we would, we don't want to have that mindset. It's not as though if we keep if we keep Jesus in our pocket in the host that hey then we'll have good luck. You know that that's no 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 that's a, that's an abuse of what what God promises. Uh, you know for for example the specific example of of the host. To what did to what and did Jesus give that? Well, take eat right. Uh, take eat that uh, this is my body given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Uh, in fact, that's why we as Lutherans don't have what we call the perpetual adoration. I don't know if you're familiar with that. In some Catholic churches, they'll have they'll consecrate a host and they'll put it in a in a container and they'll put it in a place and people are always in front of it worshiping it. That's not what it's for. Uh, it's for it's not for putting in our pockets. It's not for worshiping. It's for for consuming. Right. Um, so. So we, 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 we want to, to heed the Lord's words, not be destroyed like Shiloh, right? Uh, and he says, I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. And what that means is um, that it will be destroyed in such a way that people say, hey, you don't want to be like Jerusalem, right? And uh, so, so that's the word that the Lord gives to him. So uh, verse 7, the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words. He goes to, in the house of the Lord, he goes to the temple and, and speaks his words. And, and at this point, the temple is in, you know, the, the ark and the temple and all that is in, is in Jerusalem uh, because David brought them there and Solomon built the temple, right? And when Jer- Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, 
Then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and the city shall be desolate without inhabitant, which he didn't explicitly say without inhabitant, but right, it would be destroyed. And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. So here you see the reception of the people. Um, you know, I kind of think about this like if, I, if we were to go out in the, in the streets uh, and, and, and preach this right now, um, you know, preach the, the need for our country to be called to repentance. Uh, depend on where you go, you might get some people who just think you're nuts, but, um, but you could find, you know, as, as the church is, uh, is speaking things faithful to God's word, you're finding more and more that that is pricking people's consciences and, and, and they're not wanting to have it. You know, the, think about the whole cancel culture kind of thing. Um, that's not directed at the church per se, but it's directed at things that are consistent with, with the teaching of the church in some ways, right? Um, you know, I, I uh, look at, uh, I don't know if you saw uh, Senator Ron Paul, Rand, excuse me, Rand Paul, was challenging some things on, on like transgenderism recently. And, and you read about how that was perceived in the press and it, was not, it wasn't received well by a lot of people. But what he was saying is it's not appropriate for us to let children expose the, themselves to these things that could be so destructive to their personality. And yet that's a message that's heard you know, with, 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 with um, anger. You know, it, anyway, uh, you know, so I, I think we can draw a parallel there with that a little bit. Um, you know, and thankfully Rand Paul wasn't taken outside and, you know, hanged or anything like that. But, but it's, um, things are kind of trending in that direction. It doesn't, doesn't mean that this will be what happens, but it just, at this point in time, things are trending in that direction. We can make connections there. Uh, so v uh, verse 10, when the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. So there they are in the temple. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and all the people, this man deserves the sentence of death because he has prophesied against the city as you have heard with your own ears. They don't like it. So what are they going to do with him? They don't like that he's telling them to repent and that God will bring, will bring um, judgment against them. Um, and if we, again, if we said the same thing, how would people respond? Again, not maybe killing us, but, or threatening to kill us, but they wouldn't respond well. And so here it is, this man, but they they're, are going so far as to say they'll kill him. This man deserves the sentence uh, of death. People don't, people don't like hearing the message of, of repentance. It, it, it pricks against our, our, our sinful natures. I said that of a conscience being pricked, you know. Um, when the conscience is pricked, it, it tends to, to rail against what pricks it, uh, rather than repent. It tends to say, you're wrong, and, and I'm going to treat you poorly because of it, right? Uh, verse 12, Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city all the words you have heard. Now therefore mend your ways and your deeds and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. Um, you know, the, throughout all this, I can't help but think of Jonah going to Nineveh. And, and um, you know, he kind of says at first, I'm not going to go there because they're going to kill me. And then he gets swallowed by the fish and he has to go. Uh, but he goes and, and then they do relent. And then he's kind of sad about it. It's kind of funny. But um, uh, but but the, you know there is that when, when there is repentance the Lord relents of that threat of judgment right and so that's that that what we see there uh, that, that that Jeremiah is saying that could happen uh, but verse fourteen but as for me then behold I am in your hands do with me as seems good and right to you so he says you know whatever you want to do with me you're going to do it that's that that's what whatever you say okay. Uh, and continuing, only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood on upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. Right. So if you if you put me to death, it's on you. Right. Um, for in in truth, the Lord sent me to speak all these words in your ears. And and that's you know that's good for us as the church to remember in this time that we are we are called to speak faithfully what our Lord speaks. And, um, and and there are so many things that uh, that, that that applies to now, um, you know, to kind of tie back to to the uh, the gospel lesson. If we're not with our Lord, we're against Him. So uh, we are called to be to be with Him. Uh, we are called to be with Him uh, in, in love, though. You know, we don't want to be self righteous. We don't want to um, tell tell everyone how how terrible they are because they're terrible and we're good, right? Um, but know that that call that call to repentance applies. To, to all of us, um, but it is a true call, and and um, you know that that's that, that we we are we are to heed it, so, uh, and and also knowing that that God calls us to do this because of love for people, 
you know, that we want people to hear and believe, uh, and that we would hear and believe that we would be forgiven in that, that blood of Christ, that, that uh, the Lord would relent, because He, he will when, when, when there is, uh, He is gracious and merciful, and we see that on the cross. Amen. All right, we continue with the Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.